Be a Jesus. I want to get at least to where I can see people, see who's coming in, see what you comment, and that way I can go back and forth. Hello, Sister Hannah, Sister Candy, Sister Lily. I see all my babies coming out until I love y'all. Thank y'all for coming on. God bless y'all. Thank you for being in position on tonight. God bless you, Natalie. God bless you all. Amen. Sister Lily, did you get um did you get my information? Keep me in prayer. We'll pray. We'll be praying for you, sis. And stay connected to God. Don't be in and out. Stay in and, and see that one thing about it. Let me speak a word into your life. Uh God has called you to a place, and you know God has called you that. Uh, you know God has chosen you from a, I mean from a little as from a little girl you knew you was always different that's why you ain't never you never fit in and I just thank God for giving me eyes to see and ears to hear just to speak a word onto you tonight just know that God has called you know that God's not mocked as well and God gonna use you there's an appointed time amen so God bless you hello sister Erica Yes, and check my yes, I will be I will check my mail and I will be looking out for that sister Lily. God bless you. And thank y'all for coming on tonight. Who else we got on Sister Hannah? Let me know where y'all at, where y'all coming from, those of you watching me, where you tuning in from on as well. People watch this from all over the world. And I just I get surprised where the people tune in from. I mean, they be from other countries watching me, and I'll be like, wow, can you even understand? What I'm saying, like they, I know they hear Jesus and they understand Toronto, uh, Toronto, Canada. Wow. NYC people from, see what I'm saying? People from all over, uh, New Mexico, um, Houston, <laughs> uh, Virginia, y'all from all over. And I, I, it's nobody but the Lord that connected y'all with me and God uh, bless you, sister Hannah. I was just talking about you, uh, sister Hannah yesterday. Amen. So God bless y'all. Really good to see y'all. There's nobody but the Lord. And I thank y'all for being on and watching me. Brother Travis Miller here. Those of you, those of you who don't know me, uh, I do this teaching here Monday through Friday. And I did this, I do this thing here called the Midnight Cry. I've been doing this for over a year now. And it's something that God has called me to do. I believe, I do believe God has called me to ministry. Uh, I do believe there's a point in time for God to elevate the ministry. And I just thank God for giving me a made up mind, a fixed up heart. Amen. Hope I get to share my story sometime. You will. And if you want to reach out to me by email, you can do that as well. Amen. Oh, yeah. God will show some things. God will reveal in due time. Amen. But that's one thing about the Lord. There's a time for God to speak. So if there's a time for God to speak. There's a time for us to be listen, listening, amen. But he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church, amen. I feel great on tonight. And one thing about the midnight cry, y'all, I'm addicted to the midnight cry. I'm addicted to it. And I'm addicted to teaching, prophesying, just sharing God's word. And like uh, the man of God was saying, it's like a fire shut up in my bones. It's like my, my belly just be so full of this word. Uh, just to get it out, just to prophesy. But I have awesome revelation, y'all. Uh, I had a word that I wanted to do tonight, but then God sent me a dream and then spoke to me last night. And I'm going to get into this and I'm going to show you uh, the revelation that I wanted to kind of flow on tonight. And y'all see, I had the title that said right or wrong. And there's a reason why I did that. Uh, and I'm going to show you with the revelation, because if some of you understand uh, I'm going to get straight into it, but I'm going to show you scripture when I paraphrase off this. I'm just going to speak to you uh, before I get in. Just build a foundation very brief on this. Um, we have to be watchful of the seeds that we sown. I'm telling you, I had a whole nother message. I had a whole nother message that I really wanted to do. And God uh, started dealing with me about consequences. Um we're dealing with consequences of things. How many of you are in a season where God is, is whooping you for some things that you've done? God is whooping some of y'all for the seeds that you sown. Y'all talk to me on tonight. I mean, we're seeing things from the left and to the right. A lot of this stuff is a result of seeds that we've sown. Some of us are dealing with repercussions consequences from things that we did 
This is why I also believe in this season right here. If you get to a place where you take accountability for what you did, what part you played in it. I know we like to blame other people and, and we try to justify why we did what we did. You not knowing that this thing, listen, what goes around comes right back around. For the life you live, for the seeds that you sown, evil and good, this stuff comes around, amen. It's about recompense. It's the season of recompense. Meaning we're getting ready to reap this stuff. We're going to reap this stuff. This is why I hope many of you just think that this word right here is not going to be fulfilled right before you. We read this word day in and day out and you don't believe it. You don't believe God. God is, is really about his word. You don't believe God's word is not going to manifest before you. This thing is true. So beloved, many of us, and I'm bringing a revelation on tonight uh, as I build the foundation Many of us are dealing with consequences, things that we did, what we did, people we were connected to. Now we're dealing with this stuff. We're starting to eat the fruit of a thing. And see, some people, I, I just look at the, the lifestyle of people and how they live and how they sow discord and how they mean, they nasty, they hateful, they backbiting. And the, I guess these same people don't expect this stuff to come right back up on them. How can you gossip and talk about everybody and, and throw people under the bus, backbite, slander their name, and then you expect not to get the same in return? You're going to eat the fruit of it. You're going to eat the fruit of what you did, the, the seeds that you sown. Many of us are about to eat that very fruit of the things that we've sown. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7. Galatians chapter six, verse number seven, he says, be not deceived. Don't be deceived. He says, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever man soweth that so we also reap. So there's a time, there's going to be a time to sow and there's going to be a time to reap. It said, God is not mocked. God, meaning God is not a liar. One thing about it, God's word is forever settled in the heavens. And his scriptures cannot be broken. This word can't be broken right here. I know we like to try to do away with the word of God. We add and we take to it. We, we, and we like to give half the scroll. No, it's time for us to eat the whole scroll because God's word going to be fulfilled whether you believe it or not. See, many of us, we try to just tuck this word of God away. Then you pull out your little scriptures to try to fit your lifestyle. You pull out the scriptures of what you think that'll work for this season, that'll work for the people. So many of us, we so we compromise so much that God can't even use us like he wants to. You compromise the scripture. You try to take this word and, and say, well, I think it means this and I don't see it like that the way they said. There's a reason why God may got you like that. Anytime you start adding to it and taking away from this word, guess what? You're going to be in trouble and that, that lets you know that you're an error. When you start doing, when you start taking away from the word, when you start doing that and compromising, when it's written now, so ain't, there's no sense in trying to compromise what's already written. You either say, God, I receive it or I don't. He said, be not, he said, be not deceived. He said, for God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that so we also reap. So when there's a seed, guess what happens after the seed? The outcome of a seed is a tree. You get the fruit of a thing. So, beloved, this is what goes back to what I was saying when I was coming into the scope. Many of us are seeing the results of the seeds that we've sown. You're seeing the results of this stuff. You're starting to eat the very fruit of the words that you've sown. Some of you sown, are sowing seeds by your mouth. you cursing people, speaking curses over people. you you backbiting Gossip and sowing discord. Do you not know that God is watching your life? He said, behold, my eyes are in the good and the evil. So, you know, God is looking down upon you. When you're talking about your coworkers on your job, God is looking down upon you. When you're talking about your brother or sister in the church, God looking down upon you, not knowing you know what you're doing. You planting seeds the whole time. When you're on the phone gossiping, you planting seeds, knowing you should be praying for your sister, 
but you want to already tear it down and tear down influence and try to kill that character. And many of us, we do this stuff secretly. But then next day you see them, you smiling in their face. See, God looking at that, he looking at your lifestyle, how you too face. He looking at that, how you carrying on conversation behind people's backs. Just got done talking about it. Hey girl, how you doing? All in her face laughing and smiling. Joking about what you seen on TV last night. No, you just two-faced. Some of us three-faced, five-faced, four-faced. I mean, we don't know who you're going to be today. You so in and out, you got that bipolar spirit. See, God is looking at that. Some of us don't have no fruit. We don't have no fruit of the spirit. We don't have no love, but you say you got God. You speaking in tongues, but the same tongue, turn around and curse your brother out. Turn around and curse your boss out, your sister out. I'm saying this kind of stuff, not knowing that we're sowing seeds. He said, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that so we also reap. So now we're wondering why we're eating the fruit of a thing. We're wondering why we're reaping this bad stuff. Maybe it's because of the bad seeds that you sown. You can't, you can't sow an apple seed and get an orange tree. You can't sow an orange seed and get an apple tree. You're going to get that very same seed that you sown is going to manifest before you. Somebody listen to this on tonight. Because you're sowing seeds and you're not thinking this thing gonna be, is, is going to catch up with you. Yeah, them seeds you sown, listen, one thing about it, it may take time for this thing to take root and come up, but the seed that you sown, oh, it's coming. There's a season. There's a time. There's going to be a harvest. Talking about harvest is going to be good. Some of it's going to be bad. It might be plentiful for many, but it's not going to be good. Many of us are getting ready to eat the fruit of the seeds that we sown. Are you listening to me on tonight? And I pray and I hope you taking heed to what I'm saying. And I'm sitting here giving you scripture. There's no need in getting mad. Just receive it on tonight. This word for me too. It ain't just for you. You think I'm exempt for this? This for me too. This for me too. I have to learn not to hold grudges against people. To this day, I still do that. But I have to turn around and say, I got to show love. God, help me to release it. And then, you know, I'm normal like you. Then I can release it and move on. That's also a seed. Some of us listen what we listen to. You, I mean, now you hating your brother without a cause because of what you listen to. I've done that because of who's spoken to your life concerning your brother, your sister. Now we believe in lies instead of going to your brother, investigate before y'all try to, uh, but try to like indulge and, and gossip and listen to people and hating people without a cause. And, and first, make sure it's true first and then investigate. Do your own investigation. So what, whatever this sister telling me, is this thing true? So we just go off what people tell us now. You go off what, what the brother told you, go off what the sister told you, what your coworker told you, instead of just coming to the person and just saying, brother, I just, I just want to ask you a question. You know, this is what I heard. You know, I'm, I'm coming to you and see what's so crazy. You got to watch that gossip stuff. Because the most dangerous person is not the talker, Sister Erica. You know who the most dangerous person is in that situation? It's the listener. It's the one on the receiving end of a thing. So now you done told one part of a story. Before it get to that next person, this thing, you done got three or four stories mixed in one now. Because of what somebody else just told you. So now somebody told you one thing before it get to the third and the fourth person. Now this thing is so mixed and crossed up and contaminated. So now you don't know who to believe. Oh, I heard it from this person. I heard it from that person. Not knowing we are sowing seeds. We cursing our brothers and sisters behind their backs. We cursing them. Many of us do more talking about people than what we do praying for them. And that's what y'all doing. Y'all killing influences. Christ called you a murderer. He called you a murderer when you start speaking against your brother. See, your mouth can murder people. It's not just with a gun or a knife. Your mouth can murder people. You killing their influence. You killing their character. You killing their marriages. 
Do you think that stuff is right? No, you're going to reap that stuff. You're going to eat the fruit of everything that you said. You're going to eat the fruit of the seed that you sow. So he said, first off, beloved, be not deceived. He says, be not deceived. For God is not my God is not alive. That for whatsoever man sowed, that's so we also reap. You can call it karma, whatever you want to call it. People love that word karma. So if that's your favorite, your, your, that's your word for, that's the vocabulary you use, call it what you want. You can say what goes around, come around. It's going to come right or back around, or right around. So you can't talk about people and expect not to be talked about. You can't cheat and lie, expect not to be lied on and cheated on back. What goes around comes around. One thing about this earth realm, it'll come back right around on you so fast. That very seed you sown may come right back on you tomorrow. It may come back on two weeks, three weeks, a month from now. You don't ever know when it's going to come. It may be 15, 20 years before that seed catch up with you. This is what we deal with. This is what we experience. You better ask somebody who know. Some of the same seeds that they sown years ago have come, have, have came back up. I mean, some people went after them being put in jail. Because of seeds they sown years ago. Only because they didn't take the time to repent for what they did, what seeds they sown. God, forgive me for the seeds that I've sown. Forgive me for the lies that I've told, even in my youth. Lies that I've told that got other people persecuted. Lies that I've told that got other marriages torn down. Lies that I've told that wrecked, wrecked communities and wrecked homes. You think you're not going to be held up accountable for that? Many of us are going to be held accountable for the seeds that we sown. Whatsoever man soweth, that so we also reap. I'm building this foundation up unto this revelation because when I tell y'all, God spoke something to me last night through a dream. And this thing was so powerful. But see, before it is, I kept seeing a lot of consequences from the seeds that I sown years down the line. I'm paying, I'm, I'm, I'm paying a fine. I'm paying fines from something I did 10 years ago. Something that I did 10 years ago when I was on drugs, strung out and partying, wilding out, having a good time. Time I had no license, no insurance, driving, reckless driving, running, running from the police on Xanax bars, had been drinking, smoking, had a little money in my pocket. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm reaping that now that I went to jail for it back then. And then now I'm still paying on fines for stuff that happened way back then. Consequences. God started speaking to me about consequences. Watch, watch. Let me show you. Came into this year, January rolled around, about the middle of January. Started seeing these phone calls about different billing and different things like that. About towards the end of January, I got my check. Realized something wasn't right when, uh, when the deposit hit my bank account. So I saw a garnishment on my check. I'm saying, Lord, what's going on? So I go and I investigate a little further. These people came and started garnishing my check, garnishing my wages because a result of a seed I've sown through a credit card. So there's another consequence that I'm dealing with. So I'm sitting here looking at this stuff that I'm reaping from all this stuff that I did. All this stuff that I did. All of a sudden, God, I mean, all this stuff happened back to back, y'all, at one time. One time. Let me show you. Saw another phone call, got a voicemail from, I heard a lady's voice saying it's very imperative that we hear back from either you or your legal representation. When I heard that, I said, legal representation. I said, she talking that kind of lingo. I say, this ain't good. This ain't good. The book of talking like that, legal representation. Oh, you, you did something you ain't had no business doing. I said, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and accept what I did. So I went ahead, I called back. The booger got on the phone, was like talking to me like she was my mom and was like, well, you brought this money and you need, you obligated to pay it back. I mean, talking to me crazy. 
So I'm like, man, like you, uh, the, the objective of a bill collector, you supposed to be getting me to try to pay the bill. <laughs> you supposed to get me trying to pay the bill. So, I mean, this lady, I mean, y'all are going off on me like you brought this money. And what I mean, we're trying to work with you, but you, you're trying to be like kind, but basically almost said everything, but curse me out. So I'm like, man, like I'm dealing with this, but see, God allowed, God allowed that stuff. God allowed this stuff. So guess what I did? I said, you know what? I'm going to start paying this back. Start paying a, a payment each month. So when I got in touch with the other people, it's a whole nother company. These people trying to was trying to garnish my wages again. I said, Lord, this is a whole nother thing that I'm dealing with. All within like a couple of weeks period. It was so much. But it's consequences of all this stuff that I did. Watch, watch this. I'm a, Some of y'all, somebody better pay attention. Because you're doing stuff right now. You think this stuff ain't going to come back on you. This word and this wisdom what I'm sharing with you on tonight, it's going to help you too. It's going to help you too. So now these people, the another another company from, it was from a loan or a credit card, I believe either one, which one it was. They were getting ready to do the same exact thing. So I had to kind of stop this one and say, you know what? I don't want to be uh, get up to 25%. They're taking up the 25% of my paycheck. This other company that I'm dealing with right now, they're garnishing. They're gar I mean, straight garnishing ain't, Ain't nothing I can do about it. So I just trust God, move on to the next pay, the new move on to the next paycheck. I'm like, Lord Jesus. So, so now I'm paying another company to prevent them from doing the same thing. Not knowing, listen, these are consequences for stuff that I did. See, I'm taking account, I'm I'm taking accountability for the seeds that I've sown. This is about the seeds that were sown. Whatsoever a man sow of that, so he also reap. So I knew I brought that money. I did give it back. That was a seed that I've sown. I knew I took that loan and I signed agreements. And I basically lied and said I was going to pay it back. And I didn't. So now, Sister Mary, I'm reaping the consequences of what I did. Is this helping somebody? Is this helping you? So now I got to a place. I said, God, okay, God, I see what you're doing. And God, I'm, I'm accepting full accountability on everything you're doing in my life. So I said, you know what, Lord? Lord, just give me wisdom, Lord. I, I just thank you, Lord, for the lessons. God, I thank you for the consequences. Whatsoever man sow of that, so we also reap. Many of you getting ready to deal with God, getting ready to teach you some lessons. God getting ready to whoop some of y'all in position because of the seeds that you sown. And you not thinking this stuff ain't going to come back up on you. You know what you did. You know how you lied. You know you brought money, didn't give it back. You know you killed that person's influence. You know you killed that person's marriage. You know you slept with that man's wife. You know what you did. So now you have to understand, beloved, you're going to reap what you sow. I want to show y'all this. What the Lord spoke to me last night. And this thing was so clear. And I'm going to give you the revelation of what happened through this word. Well, I was in I was in a store. And it looked like to me, I was with, I, I believe, like a friend of the family. But God showed me a parable. And they had children, young, small, uh, small little babies, small, small little girls. And I seen the little girls and they were, you know, running around the store. And I told a friend, I'm saying, wait, I just get the kids out your way and take them to another store so they can shop around. I said, okay. I said, girls, come on. So I took the girls to a, uh, another side of the mall. It was like, I was, we were like in a mall. So I took them to the store and it was like this small store and it had little tablets and different things. And one of the little girls said, okay, I want to buy this one. She said, Mr. Travis, I want to buy this one. I said, okay, well, I said, well, get it, baby. You know, get what you want. So she got it. But guess what? Keep in mind, this is what I, and this is what's so profound about it. This is what's so profound about it. I noticed when a little girl grabbed that tablet, guess what? I noticed I didn't pull out any money. So watch this. 
the little girl grabbed the grabbed the tablet. She walked. Little short, little blonde hair. Look, I mean, it was so. I seen this little girl grab the tablet, and she said, "I want this one right here, Mister Travis." And then we went. I said, "Okay, well, come on." And then we went to the uh, counter. But then the lady got a phone call. Watch, watch this parable that God showed me. Uh, the the um the the lady at the register got a phone call, and she said, "Or oh, the um." She was like, I heard somebody on the phone that said, are my, are my uh, daughters in the store? And she said, yeah, they're here with the, uh, the, the black guy, Travis or whatever. She said, they're here with him. They were like, okay. Well, they hung up the phone. So I didn't think nothing of it. Well, I noticed the money that was paid, it came from like a checkbook. It came from a checkbook. It didn't come from my money. So I let them, I let the little girls buy what they wanted. But see, I noticed it came out of a checkbook. Didn't come from me. So it was paid. So I authorized it, not knowing whose checkbook it was. I believe it was the parents. So I let them, I let them pay for this thing with the checkbook, right? So we get ready to leave. And I heard, I heard the, one of the fathers of the little girl says, where was y'all at? What did you buy? She was like, well, I bought the tablet because, you know, I wanted it. He said, I never, wait a minute. I never said you can have it. So me, you know, I'm already feeling the count of, wait a minute. I done let these, I done let these kids come in and buy whatever they want. But see, it wasn't on my expense. It was on the father's expense. It was on the family's expense, but it had nothing to do with me. So I remember sitting at a table and I woke up uh, from this, from this dream. And I heard God say, you gave wrong the right. He says, you gave wrong the right. In other words, what he was saying is, you gave wrong the right to come in. So guess what? It was the wrong thing. He was like, but you gave, you gave wrong the right. You gave wrong the right to come in. And I'm like, wow, Lord. He was like, simple. This is sim simple what I'm giving you. You gave wrong the right. You gave wrong the right to come in. So it was, it was on me. It was on me. The reason why I listened that the wrong came in. I gave this stuff the right to enter in because that had, that was not my money. It wasn't my money. It wasn't, I didn't have the right to tell them girls to buy whatever you want. That wasn't my right. But he said, you gave wrong the right. <laughs> I said, Lord, I get what you're saying. I hear you. And beloved, how many of us have made wrong, wrong, but we gave the right to do for the wrong to come. We gave the right for this stuff to come in. We gave the right for the filthiness to come in. We gave the right for the fornication. We gave the right for that demon to come in. See, that, see, it's about wrong or right. See, we invited the wrong in. We invited this stuff in. And that's what he said to me. You gave wrong the right to come in. Very simple revelation. So watch this. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14, verse number 12. Straight, straight from the throne, y'all. I had a whole nother message that God gave this. He said, you gave wrong the right. <laughs> wow. So he says, Proverbs 14, verse number 12, he says, there's a way unto which seemeth right unto a man, but the tabernacle of the, and no, I'm sorry, I'm, I, done mess, I done messed up that scripture. He says, the way of the which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are ways of death. So watch this. There's a way that seemeth right. There's a way that can seem right and it be wrong. Look, I remember how we was in a world and we was doing what we want to do. How we was lying, cheating, being conniving. See, we thought that stuff was right. We thought getting high was right. We thought, you know, masturbating, watching porno, having fun, doing all this little foolish stuff. See, we thought this stuff is, we, we thought it was right. But he said, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof be death. This is not only meaning the natural death, but this can also mean spiritual death, Sister Cassandra. Meaning this, this way that you think is right, this stuff that you think is right, this stuff that you're doing, that you justify why you're doing it, you justify why you mean and nasty, you justify why you in sin. See, there's a way that seemeth right, but the end thereof is death. The end of a thing can be death. So the popping pills, you feel good for the moment. It seemed right. But see, the end thereof of this thing can be death. 
So you drink and not knowing, see you drinking and driving, it seems right. Follow me on tonight. But the end thereof it is, and, and the end thereof can be death. So beloved, just let's let's just, let's take a, a a ride down memory lane. They say all this stuff that you was doing, all this evil stuff, this conniving stuff, this cheating, cheating with married men, married women, doing all this stuff, stealing, dealing in a neighborhood, dealing dope, in and out the clubs, in and out beds. Could have caught diseases, HIV. See, look, there was a way. Listen, it seemed right to what we was doing. It seemed right toting the pistols. It seemed right shooting the pistols off Bo Ravage parking lot after drinking and popping pills at the casino. It's, it seemed right doing all of that. But see, in the end thereof, be deaf. See, what many of us are doing, beloved, we're giving Rome the right to come in. That's what God told me. You gave Rome the right. There were some things that you did. It was wrong, but you gave the right for it to come in. You gave the right for this porno to come in. You knew it wasn't right. Even when you knew it was wrong, you gave this stuff the right. Many of us are giving wrong the right to come in. Straight from the throne on tonight. So he said, beloved, listen, there's a way that seemed him right unto a man. But the end thereof be death. This not only means natural death. This thing can mean spiritual death too. It'll kill your prayer life. It'll kill your consecration. It'll kill your focus. It'll kill your eyes to see, your ears to hear. So it ain't about just casket death. It ain't about that. But guess what? You can kill your spiritual life. You can kill your anointing by flirting with sin. Yeah, there's a way that seeming right. It can seem right for a moment. Yeah, getting high, smoking a blunt. Yeah, it, it seemed right. Popping a pill, snorting the cocaine, this stuff. It seems right. But see, the end thereof be deaf. See, when I was in that place, well, I mean, I was messed up. Some of you don't, some of you don't know my testimony. Some of you do, some of you do. But I was tore up from the flow up. Didn't care what nobody thought. I didn't care about I didn't care about how I look, how foolish I looked. All out in public acting like this. In and out of bed with mult I mean multiple women. It was by the grace of God that I didn't catch HIV. Did multiple drugs. It was by the grace of God that my heart did bust. Yeah, it, it felt good suppressing the moment. See, I was trying to suppress these demons that had me. I was under the influence of these demons and these demonic spirits and stuff. This witchcraft and stuff. Didn't even really realize it. See, it's crazy how you could be so deep in sin out there like that, that close to death, and then thank you, all right. That's the craziest thing. That's one of the scariest things. To be out there like that, messed up, wilding out, shooting pistols, could have got your brains blowed out, all of that drinking, driving. And then you think you all right. Can't nobody tell you nothing. I mean, just foolish, just wilding out. Just, just I mean, just I, when I tell y'all, the enemy had me in a place of, of depression, battling suicide. But see me, listen, there's a way that seemeth right. It seemed right. Getting high at the time. Popping a bottle on a Corona, snorting a cocaine. It seemed right at the time. But see, not knowing the end thereof of this thing was going to be death. Beloved, listen to me on tonight. We're giving wrong the right. We're giving wrong the right to come in. See, we, we call it evil. We calling it good. See, a lot of us, because what we connected to. So you think everything is good. So now you, you want to you wanna live holy. You want to live right. You want to serve God, but then you got others pulling you back into the world. It's time to cut the strings. Cut the strings on that wrongdoing. That evilness, them seeds that you sow. Many of you not understand them. That listen, them seeds that you sow, this stuff going to come right back around. They always say what goes around, come around. There's no way you can sow evil seed. 
and get a good tree. That ain't going to happen. That's the world declares that. There ain't no way you're going to keep sowing wrong and get right. You're trying to get the right results out of doing wrong. It ain't going to happen like that. I'm telling you, when God gave me this revelation and I was sitting here, I was like, God, what in the world? Like, God, I'm, what did I do? It wasn't about what you did at the moment. It's about, I'm showing you the consequence of why you're going through what you're going through. Why you having to pay back money. Why you having to pay back credit cards. Why I'm letting, why I'm letting the debt hit your life. You see, I'm trying to show you something. I'm trying to give you a lesson on what not to do. See, that was stuff that I was doing. I was sowing these seeds thinking it was okay. There was a way that seemed of right about what I was doing, but not knowing this thing was getting ready to take me out. The way that I was living, it seemed right at the time, but not knowing this thing was getting ready to take me out. It But it was God's mercy that came in and spared my life. It wasn't about grace. See, grace, God was giving me time. Grace means time. For example, Noah found grace. Noah found grace when God spoke to him and told him it was getting ready to rain. See, God gave me mercy. I didn't get what I deserved. I didn't get what I was deserved, but it was God's love that lifted me, oh shot. It was God's love that lifted me up out of that mess. It was God's love that lifted me up out of sin. It was God's love that kept me from when I almost so deed on them pills that day. It was God's love that stopped, stopped the stroke, that stopped the heart attack. If it wasn't for God's mercy, y'all, I would be six feet under. I'd be up more, listen, I'd be under the grave. Do you understand? The way I was living, the lifestyle. See, there was a way that seemed right, beloved. A man can seem right in his own eyes, but see, the end thereof be death. And I thank God, Sister Cassandra, that he spared me. I thank God that he gave me a second chance. How many of you thank God for a second chance on tonight? I thank God that his word say he listen his mercy was re are renewed every morning. I thank God for it. I thank God for his mercy is being renewed. I thank God for a fresh start. Every morning you wake up, you got a fresh start. So you might as well give God praise and give God glory for giving you a second chance. You got to thank God for renewing his mercy. You got to thank God for sending an angel and protecting you from the bullet. You got to thank God for giving, for sending his mercy, for protecting you in the car wreck. He could have let that thing take you out. He could have let the suicide consume you. He could have let you get your brains blown out when you got caught with that man, when you got caught with that woman. God could have let anything happen to you, but he spared you. Some of us got to give God praise for what he did. I, I, I thank God for building a fence around me. I thank God for being a product of, of a mother's prayer because when I was out there doing what I wanted to do, see, it was my mother's prayer that spared me. That said, God saved my baby. God sent an angel. God saved him and used him. See, it was, it was my mother's prayer that kept me. I wasn't praying for myself. I wasn't praying for myself. But see, when God handles upon your life, I don't care what the enemy try to do. One thing about it, God going to use you. When God, hand, when God got his hand up on your life, the enemy can't do nothing to you. He can only do something for you. Guess what? I thank God for his mercy. I thank God for moving. I thank God for his protection. Lord, forgive me for the seeds that I've sown, even in my youth. Forgive me, Lord, for rejecting your word. God, forgive me for being a reprobate. Forgive me for all those times that I, I forsook prayer. And went and did my own thing. Forgive me for that time that I put a deaf ear to your voice. When you told me which way to go. God forgive me for being disobedient. God forgive me for that rebellion spirit. That renegade spirit. When I felt like I wanted to do my own thing. Beloved we getting ready to reap some seeds in this season. But see if we don't reap it it's going to make God a lie. This is a season of recompense. Beloved, it's that hour that we come up out of the wrong ways. We can't keep calling evil good. And this is why I say in this hour, God, I thank you for the revelation. God, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for sparing you. Somebody, you're giving wrong the right. You're giving wrong the right to come in. 
You're giving wrong the right. Say, God, forgive me for that. God, spare me in this hour in Jesus. Now, I just want to encourage y'all about wrong or right. How many of you right now are giving wrong the right to come in? See, what, what many of us are doing, we we leaving a door open for the enemy to come in and don't even know it. See, you don't know what you're doing, see, when you be flirting with sin. When you go back and get back connected with these soul ties, you don't realize what you're doing. You're leaving a door open for this stuff to come in. Remember how I gave you the revelation how there was a demon in that, uh, sitting at that doorstep and the door was wide open? That demon was just waiting for a right to come in. How many of us are, are, are waiting or are we, we opening the door for something to come in? We're inviting stuff in. What you're doing, you're giving wrong the right. But I just want to encourage, I hope this revelation helps somebody. And I thank God uh, for a word like this. I thank God for truth. I thank God for transparency. Because if it had not been for the Lord, where would I be? I couldn't tell you where I'd be right now. I'd be strung out on the streets. I'd be messed up. But see, it was nobody but the Lord that spared me. That's why I give God praise. That's why I give God the glory. That's why I magnify God more than my situations. And see, I look at I look back on where I came from, Pastor Marty. I look back on that and I say there was nobody but the Lord. Man of God, it was nobody but the Lord that spared me when I when I almost OD'd in that in that bedroom that day. When I almost OD, my whole body shut down from the pills over that weekend after the drinking and the smoking. I was mixing uppers and downers, Lord Tabs and Xanax. It was God's, it was God's love that came in and spared me. When I went to that hospital that day, that doctor told me, listen, the drug levels in your system, we rolled somebody in DOA with the same exact levels in your system. That's how I knew it was nobody but the Lord. And I used that same testimony. I hold on to that. And I say, God, I know you're a deliverer. I know you're a healer because if it wasn't for you, I'd be dead in my grave. And God, I thank you for that. That's why, God, I magnify you. God, I thank you for putting your hand upon my life. And I thank you for using me, using me for your glory. And I thank God for, I just want to encourage y'all, despite of what it looked like, beloved, I just want to encourage you on tonight. Walk by faith and not by sight. Are you giving the wrong, the right? Are you giving wrong the right to come in? Say, Lord, forgive me. God, give me a stock. How I say, God, give me a heart of repentance. God, break this stony heart. God, remove this unforgiveness, this bitterness. God, I'm sowing seeds of discord. I'm tearing down characters. God, I'm sabotaging ministries. I'm coming against marriages. I'm a backbiter. I'm a fornicator. I'm a homosexual. Whatever it may be, say, God, come in and save me. Created me a clean heart, renewed in me a right spirit. Lord, I thank you for your word. God, heart, hide your word in my heart in this hour so I might not sin against it. God, give me eyes to see what you're saying. Give me ears to hear what you're saying. God, break this stony heart in this hour. I just want to encourage y'all on another midnight cry, just flowing without fail or delay about right or wrong. Amen. Awesome revelation. I, I hope y'all received it. If you received it on tonight, type I receive. Amen. Thank you for your hearts, and I thank y'all for sharing. Nobody but the Lord on tonight. I thank God for a made up mind, a fixed up heart. And he that has an ear to hear, please hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying on tonight. In this hour, beloved, we got to go back and say, God, forgive me for the seeds that I've sown. Even going back to my youth. Go back and forgive me for the seeds that I've sown in my youth. God, when I did this stuff in ignorance, they called by by seed. There was a time that God winked on our ignorance, but he calling us to repentance now. It's time for us to repent. It's time for us to forsake our, 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 our wicked ways and, and come out from amongst that stuff. There's a difference between the clean and the unclean. One thing I know for sure, that it was God that broke the stony heart. It was God that sent a release because, listen, this stuff that we hold on, this stuff will cause us to bust hell wide open, holding on to unforgiveness, holding on to anger, bitterness, all this stuff that we harboring. 
See, this stuff is affecting us. Some of this stuff is affecting your physical body. Some of you wonder why you stressed out, why you got headaches and heart palpitations because of that stuff you hold on to. You hold on to that stuff. Not knowing, listen, this stuff is hindering your blessings. He said, if you guard iniquity in your heart, your prayers will not get answered. So you wonder why you're not seeing the manifestation. What do you hold on? What do you hold on to? You hold on to the unforgiveness? You hold on to that bitterness? One thing about it, beloved, are you giving wrong the right? Are you giving wrong the right? See, we're inviting this stuff in. You're inviting the bitterness in. You're inviting that unforgiveness in. When God said, if you don't forgive me, I won't forgive you. You hating your brother without a cause. You murdering people with your mouth. Killing influences and characters. Not going, you get not knowing you're getting ready to reap what you sow. He said, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sow of that, so he also reap. You can call it karma, but this thing is coming back around. Be mindful of the seeds you sow. And don't give wrong the right. Hey, Amen. Love y'all so much. I just want to encourage you. Anybody have any questions, any prayer on tonight? Before I get off, I thank y'all for coming on as well. Amen. Thank you for your hearts. Any questions, any prayer? Man of God, can you pray for my older brothers who is going through addiction? He needs the love of Jesus. Amen. I can pray for that as well. Help us, Lord, to walk upright before you. Amen. Sister Mary Kendricks, God bless you. Good to see you. Hope all is well. Any more prayer requests? Echo my bastosi. Glory to your name. We giving wrong the right. Giving wrong the right to come in. Can you please pray for my dad? He has a blood clot in his legs. Pray for a friend's son addiction. Amen. Sister Mary, God bless you. We'll be praying. We're going to touch and agree on tonight. We're going to touch and agree. And one thing about it, God can manifest. God can move. Ain't nothing too hard for God. I don't care what you're going through, what it looks like. Through your intercession, your prayers, God's glory can reach them. Amen. God can set a miracle on your behalf. So we're going to touch God and bombard heaven just for a minute. Amen. So God, we thank you on tonight. God, we thank you for a word. God, we ask you to touch your people on tonight. Move not by power nor by might, but by your spirit. God, we come against the spirit of addiction. God, I ask you to touch him right now from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. God, take away the urges. Take away the taste, the thoughts, even the dreams of usage. God, break God, God, break even the thoughts in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for moving by your spirit. God, we pray against blood clots in the left leg in Jesus' name. God, we ask you to move in this hour. Lord, send a blood thinner. It call my seat. Send a blood thinner through him right now. Cleanse him, Lord. Renew his blood. God, we come against infections in the blood as well. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you for what you're getting ready to do. And God, we thank you. God, break every habit in this hour. We come against lust and we come against the spirit of perversion in this hour. God, move for your people. And God, we ask you to break the sleepless nights in this hour, Lord. We thank you for eyes to see, ears to hear. And God, settle your people in this season and give them sweet sleep. God, we thank you for a sound mind and we thank you for a manifestation of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I just wanted to bless y'all. Thank y'all for coming on. If you need my information on tonight, it's all in the profile. Y'all, I'll be back on uh, tomorrow night, amen. I love you so much. Be blessed.